Good morning, friends, and welcome to Belgrade, Serbia. Crazy, right? This is country like 14 or 15 for me, maybe even more. I kind of lost track, which I should count. Anyway, welcome to Belgrade. This is basically a stopover for me on my way to Montenegro, but uh, so far I've really been enjoying the city. Kind of at first got like German vibes. I arrived in the city two days ago. I've been staying at a hostel for seven nights, which might seem like a long time, but between doing some work and some travel and some planning, I think it'll all be a good choice for me. Today we're doing a free walking tour. I will link below who does these walking tours. It's a 20th century tour. I'm going to try and film as much as I possibly can to share with you and to learn some history. Belgrade, I love these tours because they are tip based. So that means you're not having to pay like an outrageous fee, but you can also kind of provide what you want based on their service. First, we need to go and find a little bit more breakfast before the tour starts. I just had a banana and coffee at the hostel and uh, we'll begin. Let's go. Oh wait, you need to hit the subscribe button. Thanks so much, let's start exploring. quick tip about Serbia that you may not be familiar with is that it does not use euros here. So they use deniers. It's not dineros. I keep wanting to say that. Denior, deniors. Anyway, in my head to Canadian, it's like eight times. So something costs 800 deniers. RSD is what it will say on the menu. It is 100. No, it's divided by 80. It's so tricky. So it's really hard to know for food if it's actually, if it is cheaper for me or not. So like my hostel, I had to pay in cash and that was 10,000 dinars, which I was like, Ugh. but it's actually only like 125 Canadian. So it's divided by 80, I believe. Anyway, you have to pay attention. This little croissant I just dropped. That cost 100 dinars. I have found cheaper, but I'm like right in the city center in like the heart of the pedestrian area. So just a little something to tide me over to after the tour. But if you know me by now, I always carry snacks. So I've got nuts with me just in case I get hungry. Let's go find where we're supposed to meet. We've begun the tour. It is a 20th century tour covering parts of what's happened in the 20th century and kind of after the Ottoman time. This is my no means a historical or political vlog. So do not come for me for information. But the tour guide said that she's 34 years old and in her time she's lived in the same city but has been under four different countries, which I think is a great example of everything. All right, the Moscow Hotel behind us is one of the oldest hotels and she was really interested in sharing the difference of kind of the Ottoman region, the Austrian influence, the influence of communism. Oh my God, so many political things that I don't want to repeat incorrectly. But now you can stay inside, it's about 120 euros a night. Brad Pitt, Robert De Niro and Albert Einstein have stayed there, which I did get told yesterday. And it's kind of like a flashback in time. I like this part of the tour mentioning food so Moscow cake is one thing that you can find in the hotel that is unique to Serbia and maybe Belgrade even but things like baklava strudel Austrian influence turkey influence you can find those everywhere even in Canada I kept thinking that little walkway underneath is for a metro station but actually it's just a way to get underneath the road so not to be confused with many other European countries where that's where you enter the subway the train the sea train that's to get to the other side. So Moscow Hotel is now behind us.
temple behind me is one of the largest Orthodox temples, not by necessarily square meters, but by distance or kilometers. And it is not finished. It started in 1935. They started building it, then the communists happened. They paused some funding issues. So it is currently still being restored, although it is open and they do use it for like Christmas and Easter, she mentioned. But they are gonna be finishing some mosaics, architecture, inside little bits. Um, we couldn't enter with the tour group, but I'm gonna enter now and check it out. It is consisted of marble from three different countries, so kind of Greece, Serbia, maybe Italian was the other one, but wow, quite incredible. Wow, that has got to be one of the most beautiful cathedrals I've seen. And I might be calling it incorrect by saying it's a cathedral, but I, have been so lucky and privileged to see so many Italian Catholic cathedrals to see an Orthodox Christian cathedral is so different for myself and also to see someone that's modern of course they started it almost a hundred years ago but to see something that has modern colors and you can see like speakers and cameras mixed in with the marble it's just I am blown away by the craftsmanship and every in the main area the main area the whole thing except for the downstairs area it's all murals and mosaics so every little piece is like a piece of stone of glass of it's just like amazing it is free to enter if you go with a tour group it was three euros so that's why we entered alone highly recommend because i'm just blown away it's all also gold and like crusted in gold i i actually had like a wow where am i moment and i was like what country am i in again <gasps> this has been crazy and I'm so glad I saw this because it's not near closer to where I'm staying or where a few of the other big monuments are so I'm so glad our tour guide left us here highly recommend that tour as well it was really great I will share that um, it's a free walking tour but of course it's tip based so I tipped 1,000 diners diners it's like dinner I learned how to say it properly dinner diners which is like maybe 10 Canadian so I think it's definitely cheaper than a pre-arranged ticket but I did have to ask other Canadians who happened to be with me if they had change because I only had like 20s otherwise so anyway make sure you have enough change with you the following day I went on another walking tour by Belgrade walking tours and it was the downtown walking tour this one was a bit longer than the 20th century walking tour from the day before and it was much deeper in history which I got a little bit overwhelmed from and I should have learned my lesson from the day before because it is pretty hard to film a travel vlog while also simultaneously being on a walking tour trying to listen to the information so this is a bit of a jumble of b-roll from some other areas of the city that we saw in Belgrade so we started in the Bohemian Artist Quarter, which has traditional taverns and is on the Skadarska Street. Hope I'm pronouncing that okay. This is actually where my hostel was, so it was quite a picturesque street to walk out to every morning when I was leaving the hostel. This is one of the mosques that was built in the 1600s during the Ottoman era, and you can tell it is by this octangle dome. This kind of dome over top of the mosque is quite easy to see that's Ottoman era, and I've seen this throughout the Balkans as well. And it's quite a beautiful piece to see between the communist style buildings. This park, the Kale Megden Park, probably mispronouncing that again, was one of my favorite parks because it was such an open space, tons of greenery, you would see families, tourists, you can see the river from below. It's quite open, just trees, parks, benches, sometimes a little food vendor. So I highly recommend taking a breather in this park during your time in Belgrade and just relaxing. Thank you.